We go to the drafts. Needless to say, one of our most intriguing drafts in a while because we're actually going to be able to draft somebody after the past two years being a little bit rough. However, what we are looking to do is still up in the air. The question is, are we trading up for Logan Gibbs? He is listed as a first to second round talent. Not a dead set top five. He does have the best, really, the best overall mobility of any quarterback in this class. We know his full grades. His awareness isn't great. His play action isn't great. But they're not abysmal. Whereas his accuracies are pretty good. Under pressure and break sack are pretty good. <sighs> That's tough to pass up. That is tough to pass up. And there aren't any other quarterbacks where you say guaranteed, like, oh, yeah, he could replace who we already have. Like, it's him or nobody else. And again, we do have three first round picks here. A couple of running backs, but obviously we wouldn't take anybody super early. In terms of wideouts projected in the first round, got to be honest, again, they look terrible. In terms of the grades, this guy is apparently a top five talent, though. How? 23 out of Florida. Slow as shit. Combine sucks outside of, the, outside of a shuttle time. He can't run a deep route. Everything else is okay. I guess I see how. But his athletic grades look like they suck. Can't really jump. I mean, I guess if that guy's available, we could we could take him and then trade the other wideout. Wideouts in this game are fucking weird, man. But I, I typically feel confident about the way I draft wide receivers because you've seen the wide outs I actually have drafted since the squid would have been the name of the night. Then King Anubis just has you just has you by a nose there. A tremendous name and thank you for the follow. Welcome in. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, tight end wise there could be someone we could take a shot on later on. Taylor Rodriguez, Brad Aldrin. I'm just saying Brad Aldridge is pretty damn close to Brad Aldrich, and I don't like it. I would change his name if I drafted him. Thank you. Um, and then the O-line. I mean, obviously, we just signed a shitload of people, so we didn't have to draft offensive linemen, but there could be people available. Uh, Anubis, thank you, though. Appreciate that. The lurk is... The lurk is still appreciated as well. Um, this is a huge decision. There are a couple of defensive linemen. It's a bit of a toss-up. That is a position of need. <sighs> that wide receiver later on is apparently good. Shout out to Ben Tuttle at defensive tackle. Jesus. Thirty-eight reps has the mobility. I could be a monster and then switch him to the edge. We don't really need a linebacker at this stage. Which is good because outside of uh, this guy here, Greg Benson, it's not amazing. We don't need help in the secondary. Although the dude looks, uh, there, there does, there do look to be some good corners. There we go. My uh, proper English. Our first pick isn't until 16th. <sighs> we have to make a huge freaking decision here. So there's Gibbs at quarterback. At wide out, I don't trust it. 
But there's Priestley, who I wouldn't trade up for, but if he was available at 16, I'd take him. Again, there's O-line help, but ideally we avoid drafting offensive linemen this early. The defensive line, there's either Jacoby Howard, a couple of the other guys looked okay, or that defensive tackle, Tuttle, who could also fill that gap. And then everywhere else there might be good players, but it might not be what we need. <sighs> Do the Minnesota Vikings... And I'm going to take a look here. So we got Mini, we got Indy, and we got L.A. I don't know who the Vikings have at quarterback. The Colts still have Richardson, but that didn't stop them from taking our current quarterback. And the Rams have Rivers. The problem is, even trading up to first overall, uh, you know, to get Tuttle could mean trading up to first overall is the issue, and we don't know what the hell the cost is going to be. I should have gone the other way if I'm looking at the Vikings. The Vikings do need a quarterback, but they might not pass up on Tuttle if he's close to generational. We've seen the AI do that before. Minnesota, if I wanted to trade for that first overall pick, what would it cost? What would it cost? We know it's going to be a lot. That's not happening. That closes our window right in our fucking face. We're not getting the first overall pick. We cannot give up three players, two of them X-Factors, and two firsts in a second. We can't get the first overall pick. It's too much. So it's out of our hands for now as to what happens here. At the same time, I actually do need to go back to the Trade Center. Just in theory, if we end up with this wide receiver, Priestley, I need to know the value. Of somebody like Deshaun Presley. Who we can trade without a cap penalty. Again, it looks like star dev patterns at best. Something like Troy Fisher. Quentin Logan. But again, we do not need a defensive tackle. Corin Porter as a corner. We also do not need. Okay. So honestly, we just keep Presley as wide out depth because we could. Good to know. So the Minnesota Vikings have the first overall pick. There's nothing we can do about it. And with said pick, they select linebacker Greg Benson. That is not who I was expecting to see go off the board here. Interesting. The Colts have the second overall pick. Their biggest need is quarterback. Even though they still have Anthony Richardson. They would want Macklin and two firsts. Four, six firsts! We're not getting the second overall pick either. It's a damn good thing that uh, we elected to sign that quarterback. Because I don't think we're getting the fucking Gibbs option here. The Colts at two select cornerback Pat Donaldson. Wasn't expecting that. Let's talk to the Rams. We're going to go pick by pick here. I mean, Gibbs, Tuttle, like we got options. We just got to play our cards right at this stage. Let's go talk to our friends in Los Angeles. Six first round picks. Holy God. What are the Rams willing to do here? Macklin a first. Uh, three firsts. Macklin a It would be all. Okay. Well, that's the one we were waiting for. We have three first round picks in this uh, draft. They want all three of them. Plus a third and a fourth and a seventh next year. We would have to be damn sure. Damn. 
some damn sure. That is a lot. Again, for either Gibbs or Tuttle. I mean, it is true that the quarterback that we have is superstar Dev, but he's also 26. So what are the odds of a breakout? That's the question. If he breaks out, then man, we're solved. But if he doesn't, then eh. Could that quarterback be an X factor? Could this guy be the last defensive lineman that we need? We literally have one missing piece on defense, and it's one more defensive lineman. Even if this guy were to move to edge or one of the other two DTs were to move. This guy having the finesse moves. The thing is, I worry that even if we trade up for Tuttle, how big of a risk is it, you know? Even though he looks insane. And the problem is, the next two picks belong to division rivals. Which means we are probably... Helping out a division rival no matter what. And we just helped out Seattle, technically, in some ways. Killed them in others. The Niners at four want the same thing. If we're trading up, we're giving up the three picks. That is the issue. If we're trading up, those three picks are gone. There's no way around it. At best. Let me look at Cameron Harden here. What ability does he have so far? It was safety valve. Catching prowess of the running backs are improved. The hell are your ratings? Again, his deep accuracy and his short accuracy aren't amazing. He's the 31st ranked quarterback in the league. He would need to break out or he's just, he's not it. I mean, at best, it's like Jared Goff getting to the Super Bowl with the Rams. It's almost in spite of him. <laughs> Trade three first rounders and get a Trey Lance would be a problem, though. <laughs> it would. It would. This is tough. This is real tough. We have two missing pieces, quarterback and a defensive lineman. Crash, it's a glitch for every freaking generated quarterback. It's number zero. It's stupid. Are we 100? I'm pretty damn sold on Tuttle. Am I sold on Logan Gibbs? And the thing is, if Logan Gibbs falls, then sweet. If he falls, then awesome. But will he? I don't think he will. I don't think he will is the problem. I don't think Tuttle will fall either. Again, defensive line. Jacoby Howard was there. Nick Short, Rodriguez, I mean, Ford. There are some toss-ups. I do agree, Tuttle looks like a beast. This Pam Feel is also there. Oh, my concern now is if I sim this pick, the Rams take Tuttle. That's my concern right now. How far, realistically, is a player like that going to fall? I don't think very far. <sighs> if we want that DT, I feel like we have to trade up. You know? And then again, we move somebody to the edge. The Rams, in theory, don't need one. They did just sign a free agent, but that doesn't mean shit. The Niners, in theory, don't need one. 
I don't think he slips past the Dolphins. Even though they got some younger DTs. There's that wide receiver that's apparently really good, but I don't think he'll fall out of the top 10. We don't have a top 10 pick anyway. I think we trade up here, take the lineman, and then if the quarterback falls, we get aggressive. But I think we have to trade up here to get this defensive lineman. Like I said, it's the last thing that we need. This team is still stacked. The O-line's been rebuilt. We still have the, the now two-time defensive player of the year in Chest Williams. We have two really solid defensive tackles. DeAndre McGee went superstar, for fuck's sake, at a, at a late age. It's just that right edge. Because Damian Johnson will play the middle. He did drop the star, but he's still a good player. You got Fowler, Christian White. Still three really solid corners. Two very solid safeties. And then obviously, I mean, this upcoming year could be bad, too. We got a lot of big contracts coming due. I think we have to do this. I don't think this guy will fall. Our right edge is the X Factor, yes. Our right end. I always say edge, even though edge isn't in the game. All three first rounders that we have, plus a third, a fourth, and a seventh. Is the asking price from the Rams. They don't have DT as a need. They do have quarterback. Do we think. That guy will fall past the Rams though. Because they don't always go for need. They do take best available. That defensive lineman is the only clear-cut, awesome fucking defensive lineman in this draft. It wouldn't be the first time we've given up three uh, first-round picks, though. And it, we got a freaking Super Bowl last time. I gotta look at Tuttle one more time. As it stands, I am about 80-20 in, in favor of doing this trade. Go to 79 overall quarterback. Do the job if we don't trade up for Logan Gibbs. I am really worried that Logan Gibbs is is legit. I am. In play action and awareness. But everything else isn't bad. Again, there's Jacoby Howard, who is out there at 23, has the strength, has the agility, but his finesse moves and block shedding aren't great. If it's not him, you're looking at Nick, Short, Rodriguez, and Nance, and none of their, uh, or Ford, None of their four primary grades inspire confidence. None of them do. The only guy that you can look at with a good sense of certainty is Ben frickin' Tuttle. That's it. There's some maybes in there. He's the only guarantee. I do still worry about the quarterback a lot. A lot, a lot. Trading three first for a DT. I mean, in theory, but again, he's, he won't stay at defensive tackle. He'll be moved over to the edge. And again, if that guy is as good as I think he is, he will be on the defensive line with this guy on the left and these two in the middle on a 4-3. Our pass rush will be insane with these three at linebacker 
and this being our secondary. The defense on its own might be enough to win the damn Super Bowl. It'll make the weakest part of our team a 79-rated quarterback. I'm doing it. I want another Super Bowl. And I'm not risking this guy being taken by a division rival. No fucking way. Problem is, what else are we going to take with these firsts? What else are we going to take? A defensive lineman who's not as much of a guarantee. Maybe that wide receiver. And then we trade the other one that we already have. What else are we going to get? And then we're having to look at either trading down or drafting players in positions where we don't need the help. At the very least, they still have to hit on the picks. I'm doing the deal. You got a deal, LA. I want that edge rusher. I want him. I don't have full confidence in the quarterback, but I do have confidence in this tackle. It is a lot to give up, but we are Super Bowl or bust next season. Ben Tuttle's our boy. 90 strength, 86 acceleration, 84 agility. This guy is going to devour tackles alive. No brainer. No brainer for me. We move him to the edge. And our defensive line is going to be damn near unstoppable. Our defense is so stupidly stacked at this stage. We have all the insulation in the world possible for that quarterback to succeed. There is the question of could we have avoided trading up, but I was not willing to let that guy go to the Rams. There's no way. Not after dealing with Aaron Donald for as long as we did. Fuck that. The Niners at four. Do they take the quarterback? They don't. They take safety Ryan West. The Dolphins probably shouldn't be looking at a quarterback. They don't. They take Isaiah Younger. The Lions at six. Have we looked at them for quarterbacks? They still have Hugh Richard, do they not? They do. They do not need a quarterback unless they just say he's the best available. So the Lions really shouldn't be looking to do anything here. Quarterback-wise, they take Justin Nix. Which means definitely Tuttle wasn't falling this far. Washington. At seven. Washington at seven. Do they need a quarterback? Do the commanders. They do. Is there a trade I can do for this pick? Three more firsts and three seconds, and we can also land the quarterback. Just to be totally safe, we could land the quarterback too. I'm not against it because what are the odds we even play long enough to have these friggin' picks? We give up all the picks in the damn world because my thought is too, you know, if we give up this pick, we still have picks in the third. We have a shitload of fourths and fifths. If we give up those picks and this team can't cut it, I can still flip some of these guys at the upcoming deadline and recoup assets. 
We're going to get that seventh overall pick as well because there's no way that quarterback falls below Washington. Let's do it. Let's have fun. Let's have fun. Let's do it. We land Tuttle at three, and we trade up to seven to get our safety net at quarterback. That's a whole lot of draft picks on the outs, but we take Logan Gibbs out of South Carolina, who is Hidden Dev. With 94 throw power, 90 acceleration, 94 change of direction. Well, at least he was a hidden dev. We don't know his overall yet. I think this guy is what we wanted Kurt Slater to be. I don't think we need picks in the first round from here, do you? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Danny Webster, great minds, sir. Great minds. I mean, obviously, we just did very, very well for ourselves. I do still find Jacob Priestley intriguing, but we can't really afford to trade up again. We would get demolished. Absolutely demolished by the uh, mandatory money. So we will skip ahead to the third round and just see what's up. But we land Gibbs and Tuttle for what? Like 12 combined picks it felt like? Jesus Christ. I think it was 12 picks. We used two fucking draft classes to get those guys. And oh my god, that tight end Aldridge is still available. He is a total toss-up. But Aldridge is still there. Is there anybody else? Six first rounders, I think so. But again, we acquired extra first rounders, so it worked out. Let's look at this tight end again really quickly. We could use a tight end. He's 21. Bad combine. Six first, three seconds, a third, fourth, sixth. <laughs> See an awareness. Ah, that, that guy's not. He's not who we want him to be. He's not. So a quarterback, obviously we don't need anybody. Running back. Round three to four, Lawrence Strong. I don't like the grades. Wide outs. Jaleel Murray is still there. No shit, because he's trash. Rounds three to four. Is there anybody here? We know Aldridge wasn't looking that great. The run blocking isn't so hot for Curtis Adams. Let me look at this guy. We have a potential steal here for Curtis Adams or the next guy in line. Adams has the mobility. Doesn't quite have the strength of the vert. The toss-up, but he has some solid hands. And then there's Aaron Watkins, 22 out of Michigan. Top end speed's a bit low, but he has the strength. Elite strength, allegedly. Elite strength, but terrible pass blocking. Spac catch, uh, spec catch, spac catch. The fuck's a spac catch? I don't like him as much as the other guy. I think if we go for a tight end, we go for Adams, which is pretty likely at this stage. There is also. Let's look at Kyrie Whitfield first and foremost. 22 out of USC. Hit or miss for combine and pro day numbers. Can't block where the dam can't run a route. Okay, where was this other guy? Carson Irons, 22 out of Bama. Combine's disappointing. Okay, well, clearly if we take a tight end, I think it's going to be that Adams guy. Is there anybody else? Marvin Woodall, but we need a tight end more. I mean, this guy would have to be like the steal of the draft. For us to take him. Let's have 37 reps. Fuck, I say he's going to be the steal of the draft. He does look pretty good. He does look pretty good. Bit of a toss-up, but still. Um, at center, Barry Alexander. Grades are a huge unknown. Combine's not bad. Maybe not elite for a center, because there always are fewer centers. Uh, Brian Larson. What do we got for Brian Larson here? 
we have enough assets to trade up in the third round again. That's that's a toss up. I don't know if we have to necessarily. Uh, defensive end round three to four. Will Baker looks like trash. So does Ernest Pierce. I still think we made the right call, man. Because otherwise, I mean, yeah, we would have had different first rounders, but we landed both. What about Brandon Davis at DT? Not strong enough. I think right now we're looking at Adams. Bunny, take it easy. Uh, linebacker. Hello, James Parker. If the combine's good, this guy is immediately on our radar. It's not bad. Finesse moves aren't great. He's a bit of a toss-up. Hits like a truck. Round three to four projection. That's another guy. That's another guy to keep our eye on right now. Uh, middle linebacker. Jesus Christ, these linebacker steals. Um, Clayton Hill, and then the other guy especially. Let me look at Clayton Hill here. Did not participate, which is always interesting. Good hit power. And then this, this guy here, Casey Anderson. A little bit slow. But can hit like a truck. A couple of linebackers here that look very solid. I'm going to have to check where our next picks are. And then on the right, J. Roan Ramsey. There's also day three Paul Baker. And another guy down there at the bottom that looked awesome. Uh, Jerome Ramsey. Terrible combine. Okay, he's not it. Again, we might as well take inventory of potential options here. Um, round three to four corners. There are some decent options, potentially. Kentrell Bailey is probably the most interesting with his grades. At least he can play man. His zone coverage isn't great. Boise State. Play recognition's pretty bad. His combine would have to be insane, and it's not. He's got good speed. That's about it. Uh, safeties. Clearly Joe Beckham's falling for a reason. That guy can't play zone. And on the other side, they're day threes. Okay. So, um, when the hell are our next picks? We got the 27th. I'm going to go for the tight end because it's our biggest need, and then we can have fun. Uh, so we're going to take Curtis Adams here and hope that this tight end is decent. Even if he's normal dev, it's okay. But he is our biggest need, and we should at least fill that need. He is normal dev. That's okay. That's okay. We already have an elite level tight end, but we needed a, a good secondary option behind him. So we are going to hope that that linebacker is still available. I could have traded up. There goes Aldridge. Could have traded up to make sure, but again, you can't get everybody in a draft. Is Parker still available? He's not. What about Woodall? Nor is Woodall. Jesus. Maybe we should have traded up, huh? Middle linebacker, Hill and Anderson. Wow, everybody I was looking at went, holy shit. Well, that happened fast. Every single player I was looking at for that round went off the board in those 10 picks. Well, shit. We'll trade away this third rounder then and then start looking at day threes. <laughs> that is horrifically unlucky. Third, fifth, and a seventh from Buffalo right now. Or the Raiders or the Giants. Can anybody offer better than third, fifth, and seventh? Uh, let's go for the Falcons because they are kind of on the way down. So. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. That was, uh. That was really unfortunate to see that many players fall off the board there. I should have been more aggressive, but I have to be cautious. We had two picks in the top seven. So, all right, uh, let's look at the day threes then. Obviously, the last thing we need right now is a quarterback, although Gary Neal could be worth it with his accuracy. But, eh. Yeah, I mean, if we were to take anybody, I mean, 
Gary Neal. Then again, we don't need a we don't need him. We'd have to carry four quarterbacks, so we can't take a quarterback the rest of the way. Uh, day three running backs. Okay, first super interesting option is Austin Whitehead. Have a look at that combine. Twenty three of Ohio State. He's too slow. He is too damn slow. Uh, what about Josh Redmond? Josh Redmond. What grades look like. He could be okay. Not amazing, but he could be okay. Um, let's look at Brian Watkins. There's actually quite a few running backs left on the board here. Ryan Watkins at a TCU. Good mobility. His juke move sucks, even though he's a uh, elusive back. No, thank you. No, thank you. And then the last one to look at here was uh, Alani Greenwood. Alani Greenwood. Not good enough. All right, so there's one running back who could be interesting. Again, a player has to be really interesting for me to take them here at this stage, though, because of the money we have to commit to them. And knowing that they're probably going to be a depth player, like, we need, like, these guys to be hits. If we're going to take them, otherwise it's just a waste of a pick and it's a waste of money. Nobody there. Uh, tight end, we did already take one who ended up being just kind of mid which makes me a little bit afraid because some of these other guys do have decent grades. Still, that guy's catching traffic isn't good enough. Some freaking ranges on these guys. We looked at Kyrie Whitfield. He wasn't that great. We looked at Carson Irons. This guy's catching traffic isn't very good. What about these two guys here at the bottom? Justin Ringer and Joey Main. 23 out of Wisconsin for Ringer. Not good enough. And Joey Main out of LSU. Combine Beast. If we were to take another tight end, it would be Main. Doesn't look that bad. Uh, on the O line. That guy having a C awareness ruins it. Couple of players we could risk it for. We looked at Barry Alexander before. He said Irons was good. Didn't we look at him more in depth and the combine sucked? Or am I recalling the wrong player? Matt Walls looking good from a combine perspective. And Enrique Chavez is looking the best. Has no run block finesse. Pass block extraordinaire, Enrique Chavez. And again, the other guy, Matt Wall, looked okay too. Uh, right guard for day three. Let's see, he's kind of ruining it. Whoops. Left edge side. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. What about the right? Nobody there. Defensive tackle. It was a DT heavy draft, and we clearly got the best of the bunch. Linebacker. Okay, this guy can't block shit worth a damn. Colin Dugan. I am a little bit upset about missing out on those other linebackers, but what are you going to do? Colin Dugan doesn't quite have the mobility I thought he would. Yeah, I mean, he, you need that. He's good in coverage, but again, he doesn't have the mobility that you need to really make the most of it. Um, and then the other guy here is Terrence Griffin. Terrence, 23 out of Bama. Not quite a complete enough set of numbers there. Uh, middle linebacker. It'd be Nathan Peralta. 22 out of Wisconsin. Not quite good enough. It's decent, but not enough. And then on the right for projected linebackers, we do have a couple. We start off Paul Baker, 
21 out of Syracuse. What does that combine look like? It's not good enough. Damn it. I should have gone for those linebackers earlier, but at least it's not devastating. I mean, again, the team is still good. Joey Goldsberry. What do you look like? Not good enough. Malik Woodbury. Yeah, not feeling it. Then Cam Corbett, out of Maine. Let's fucking go. Has some mobility. D play recognition for coverage, though. Ah, might just take him because, I mean, he's a, he's a home stater, but not a guarantee. Uh, corners. Holy shit, there's a lot of corners. A lot of corners that are projected to be drafted. My God. Is there anybody who is good at both man and zone coverage? And the answer to that question is Isaiah Turner. And that's it. Isaiah, what's that combine look like, my friend? Colorado State's Isaiah Turner. A little bit slow in terms of high-end speed. It's not brutal. He can't really tackle. His play record, he might be worth a late risk. That's about it. That's pretty much all these guys are worth. It's just a matter of when the hell do we want to start taking people. We have half the fourth round. You know? Um, it's safety. Nobody. That's strong safety. These three guys at the end. We got Demarcus Hale. Out of New Mexico. Lobos. Ooh. Combine perspective, his awareness isn't great. I highly doubt he's amazing. He's, he's not going to be worth more than the UDFA. I don't know if any of these guys, in fairness, are going to be worth more than a UDFA. Could be worth it. And then BJ Raymond. Honestly, I feel like for the most part, we're going to be trading down. I have uh, about six guys on my list of players that I like. None of which are in extreme... Uh, well, then again, it's not that much more taking them now between taking them later on. I might as well just start taking people now and then what you know, kind of whatever happens, happens. Uh, so I am very intrigued by the linebacker, Cam Corbett. Let's go ahead and take him. 23 out of Maine. Ah, normal dev. That's all right. We needed some depth linebackers. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than I should pay, but I can always... Practice squad him and cut down the money. So we will go ahead and risk it for these guys in this round. And then all those fifths and stuff like that. We're just going to try to get rid of. Um, let's go for the tight end main if he is still there. I'm going to double check Carson Irons since he's still there. And 22 out of Bama. We definitely checked him. Yeah, again, the combine wasn't. Amazing. That was the issue with him. Is Maine still there? He is. Let's take Joey Maine, our second tight end. But we'll try him out. Normal dev for him, too. So not too much luck at tight end, but we got two different options to choose from come preseason time. Not going to have to wait too far for our next pick. Matt Wall is off the board. We're looking at him. We got about three dudes left. That's the wall, brother. We had about three dudes left that I was uh, intrigued by. Is Rich uh, Redmond still there at running back? No, he is not. So I won't be taking a running back. That's fine. Is Turner available at corner? Yes, he is. Let's take Isaiah Turner out of Colorado State. Again, another depth option. Not getting too lucky with any steals here, but obviously I wasn't in control of our scouting this year, at least at the start. And what we needed drastically, drastically changed over and over again. Um, Chavez is the interesting one. There he is. Let's take him. So, Daddy wants to see his second finger. I mean, you got to pay extra for that. You got to pay extra for that. And yeah, Chavez is kind of mid. Yeah, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these picks didn't work. 
Gotta hit up the only two for that one. Um, I didn't see if there was a kicker or a punter. I might as well before I start getting rid of these picks. Because again, right now, it's just not worth it for us to... Uh, it's just not worth it for us right now. I'd pay extra to have you fill my holes with your love sauce. I mean, that might be able to be arranged. How much money are we talking here? I got a wedding to pay for still. It's mostly paid off, but still. Got to offset those costs. Talk to the fiance in the morning, see what she thinks. Price is right. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm here for it. Why not? Shout out to the term love sauce, by the way. All right, let's trade away these extra picks. Again, the reason why we're going to trade them away is because the, odd, the odds are the players' lefts aren't going to be that much better than the UDFAs, and we can commit less money to UDFAs than we would have to for these picks. That's the issue. And we still have a handful of picks. Now, of course, next year's draft, we don't have a pick until the third round. That's a little bit problematic, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What the hell can we get here? Anything decent? Bunch of draft picks and random dudes. 71 wideouts. Is there magically going to be a half decent player? Might as well look. Fucking Tony Blair. <laughs> I might trade Dean Christmas. Oh, that might be a better name than Tony Blair. It might be. Fucking Dean Christmas. Arthur Allen. Wasn't that the name of the fucking guy who was thought to be the Zodiac? Well, for the most part, what's offering us the best picks? Fourth, a sixth, and two sevenths. A third. Third and a fifth from the Chargers. Can anybody compete with that? Because that is what we need to uh, help us out in the future. I don't think anyone's topping a third and a fifth. They are not. We will take that deal from the Chargers and take a random wide receiver who's getting paid way too much money. But I'll be able to uh, get him off the roster for nothing. So, you know. There we go. So, let's get a, uh, a draft recap here. I never thought we'd even go through another draft with this team. It just so happens that that's how it played out. We narrowly missed the playoffs and somehow, some way, we have rebounded to have this team $5 million in available cap after all the signings and two picks in the top seven. That's off for your Zodiac knowledge. I've been intrigued. And let's be honest, the movie from 2007 is fucking dope, too. The draft recap. Did we make the right choice is the question. Did we make the right choices here? Ho, ho, ho. Oh my god! Chat, never doubt me again. 84 overall, Benjamin Tuttle. <laughs> we finally get an out and out generational player. Holy shit. And it could not have come at a better time. And indeed, trading up one more time would have boned us cap-wise. We literally joked about him going to the Rams and being the next Aaron Donald. UDFA is on hold for a few more seasons. No shit. 84 over. He's got to be an X-Factor out of the gate. Twelfth over uh, the twelfth best DT in the league already, and again we can move him to the edge or somebody else. But Ben fucking Tuttle, eighty four overall. Oh my god, he can easily be moved to the edge too. That is insanity. The quarterback is a seventy three. So the quarterback is still more of a project. We will have a decision to make about what quarterback starts this season. And it might even be by a game-by-game -game basis. Everybody else that we took, uh, Joey Maine actually is much better than Curtis Adams. That Curtis Adams pick probably really fucked us out of a linebacker. 
Um, but Joey Maine will be a useful secondary tight end. Ben Tuttle, 84 overall. The best player we've drafted, and we've drafted some damn good players. So did the Niners getting Ryan West. Unreal. Holy shit, man. I said our defense was complete with that pick. <sighs> that wideout Priestley was a 77. I was right. He didn't fall out of the top 10. Jesus Christ. So there really wasn't anybody else. There was James Ford. He would have been a 74. Like some of these other defensive ends, obviously I'm not looking at their dev pattern. They had some okay OVRs, but I mean, Jesus, did we make the right choice? It's not even a conversation. One of just three players at an 80 or better. And all three went in the top four. The third round is the interesting one, although we get a look at the second round. They were a handful of 76s to go. The lowest was a 64 quarterback to the Patriots. Third round. Paul Bryant, Quentin Reeves. There's James Parker. Yeah, he was the pick. We missed out big time on James Parker by drafting for need instead of who we thought was the best available. I did think Parker was the best available, but it's, again, we, we drafted for need. And that's usually a mistake. So yeah, the Broncos get a crazy fucking steal there. Uh, I am not going to shed too many tears about that mistake at this rate. But yeah, we, uh, we fucked up taking Adams big time. Uh, Woodall was only a 68. Anderson was a 72. So yeah, we, we did have a pretty, pretty big fuck up there, but it's okay. Uh, fourth round, Matt Wall was a 75 center. So yeah, we, we really... Really screwed up. Fifth round, quality started to drop. Couple of 72s. Sixth round, uh, 75, wide out in Barber. Couple of decent, uh, decently rated line or wide outs. We don't know uh, what their dev pattern would have been, though. But we get an insane pick in Ben Tuttle. The only way that, like, that is a home run draft for us. The only way it's better is if I take that friggin' linebacker, but. Again, the logic was the logic was sound going for need. That tight end did look pretty good. You're not going to win every time. You're not going to get every amazing player. That's just not how the sport works. But we are showing up as an 87 overall team. And the last thing to confirm here tonight is what is the deal on the edge? What player does it make sense to have play the edge? Tuttle is an 84. Honestly, if we fucking took that linebacker, I could have moved Fowler, but then I'd have too many DTs. It makes sense for it to be Tuttle. He is just as good at defensive tackle as he is on the edge. So Ben, the frickin' D-line is going to be Chest Williams... With Ben Tuttle, and then Sheldon Steele, and DeAndre McGee at defensive tackle. With, again, Devin Fowler at linebacker, Damian Johnson, and Christian White. Who did appear to drop down from Superstar, but that's okay. And then our secondary is Callahan, Flowers, and Mooney. Safeties, Ridley, and Griffin. We have to be the favorites to win another Super Bowl. We have to be. The only problem that I see right now is that we have quite a few dudes on expiring contracts coming up. So this window is one year is the only way to put it. Um, all the Pretty much all the old linemen that we signed, Deshaun Mooney, DeAndre McGee, Deshaun Presley, Damian Johnson, Derek Ridley, Lonnie Reed, Cameron Walton. All their deals are up at the end of the year. We do have $27 million in cap space right now with no cap penalty. It's beautiful. Um, we have another amazing chance. The biggest question, who the hell starts at quarterback? Who the hell 
out of these two options here, I hate how slow the menus can be. Is it the superstar Harden who's 26? Do we try to get him a breakout to see if he can jump? Or do we go with the seventh overall pick, Logan Gibbs, the 22-year-old, hidden dev? He'd be a project for sure, but he has mobility. And we could play a solid run for style. It's tough. It's tough with Gibbs. Some of his attributes are a little bit concerning. It might be tough for him to have a good enough game to get that breakout in terms of the yardage. It would take the receivers doing a lot uh, in terms of yards after catch. At the same time, Jesus Christ, do we have the receiving core to do it. So this, this will be interesting. And maybe Gibbs gets a chance. And if we're losing, we go to Harden. We have time to make that decision. This roster, despite all of the changes, is still absolutely stacked. And we're going for one more. 